Hi guys, Macy Lou here, and in today's video, I just wanted to discuss burnout and how I avoid it like the plague. So, when trying to avoid burnout, I have a definite strategy, and it's it's kind of one of those things that you might have to revisit multiple times in your life in order to actually prevent burnout from the get-go and for good. And obviously, you can't completely eliminate burnout from your your life, um, literally for good, but this way you can avoid it in very concrete ways. Now, one of these steps isn't super, super concrete, but let's just talk through it, shall we? So, step one, I really, really had to identify what caused my burnout. And I would say, I'm just going to kind of guess because I don't remember what year exactly, but either 2017 or 2018, um, I definitely was feeling some burnout around the holiday season. And how this occurred, and how it typically does occur, is just overworking myself to the bone. And what this was in this particular time frame was I was creating... Uh, artwork for my business and for myself, as well as creating artwork for Christmas gifts for people in my family. Um, and there were several people on my list, so it was not a short list by any means at that time. And I, again, I can't remember if it was 2017 or 2018, but it doesn't really matter. Really, what it comes down to is I was... <laughs> I had a, I had a very quick deadline. I uh, I think I've done this two years in a row, so it might have been 2017 and 2018 that I went through this situation. But what ended up happening is, you know, I had this list of people I was going to make these gifts for, and it was artwork. It was like paintings and stuff like that. And so not only did I have that list, but I also had other projects going on in the background for my art business. And keep in mind, all of the art that I was doing for Christmas gifts obviously is free for people art I'm doing for free. And so what ended up happening is I started to really realize that my deadlines, you know, Christmas, <laughs> basically Christmas Day, it needed to all be done. It all needed to be dry. It all needed to be packaged up and ready for Christmas Day and to give to people, right? So what I realized is I never gave myself enough time to get these done. I never, ever gave myself enough time. I always thought oh, I'll start a little bit sooner than I normally do. And I would. I would start a little bit sooner than the year before, right? And it didn't matter. It didn't matter that I started earlier. Of course, granted, if I would have started in January and had the whole year to do it, that would probably be a different story, but I was never able to do that. I was never able to buckle down and discipline myself enough to do something like that. Um, so instead, I just had heaps and heaps of work to do right up until the holidays, right? So it was a lot. And it kind of gave me very anxious vibes through the whole process. It made me kind of um, not really look forward to Christmas that much. Uh, it, it, may, it made me kind of just not look forward to the holidays, which is sad, which is sad. Um, so... January rolls around, it's all over with, all the gifts are given away, and I realized something very, very bad. I realized in January I needed to get back to work and do things for the business, and I was like, not able to. I realized that I couldn't really function in a healthy, professional way and create work at that time. I just couldn't. It was like a switch was pushed, and I just, I couldn't make art. I, I didn't have any motivation whatsoever. I was completely burnt out. I was at my wit's end. I, it was like the creative energy was just zapped out of me. And I think that that's how I would describe burnout. Like the creative energy has just been zapped out of you. Like even if you can do other things like chores or socializing or whatever the case may be, if you overwork yourself in the creative area or any area, it, you can get burnt out. And so that's what was happening to me. I had overworked myself creatively and in an artistic way. And I didn't really take breaks. I 
I guess I took <laughs> the very minimum breaks for bathroom breaks, for food, for sleeping, kinda. <laughs> but when it came down to it, I didn't take enough breaks for someone like me, and I need way more breaks than that. I realized that after the fact. And I think that what was really frustrating about it is that I didn't realize I was even heading toward burnout until it was already happening. Like, I was already burnt out. And I think that that is, um, I don't know if that's how everyone is. I don't know if this happens to everyone where when they're actually doing all that work and they're so productive and they're just going ham and they are working their, themselves to the bone. I don't know if it's anyone else like this, but for me personally, when I'm in the middle of that environment, in the midst of that, all that productivity, I don't notice I'm headed toward burnout at all. Like, I don't even feel it. I don't even notice it. So that's why it's so easy to do, because for me, I would be in the middle of all this productivity and I would be really proud of myself. And I'd be like, man, I'm getting so much done. I'm so excited. This is great. I'm a little stressed because of my deadline, but other than that, I'm doing the thing, right? But then after it's all over and you're done and you've done all that work, then it's like, you're just, you just need like the longest break ever. Too long of a break, if you ask me, for business purposes. So... I had to reevaluate things. I evaluated what my limit was. Now, this is not entirely concrete. You're not going to literally look at yourself and be like, okay, this is, this is my limitation specifically um, when it comes to like maybe hours of work or whatever. I, I'm not, at least for me, I couldn't do that. Instead, I had to realize and I had to admit that I required a lot more breaks than maybe even the average person. So, how this started off is I just started uh, working breaks into my day. So, I just kind of started like, okay, you know, I'm working on a video or I'm working on a painting. But, in the middle of that, when I need to stretch, I will get up, I will go to my window, and I will stare out the window for five minutes straight. I will look out at nature. I will watch the birds. I will watch the butterflies. I will watch the bees. I will do whatever I can do. Now, this is hard to do in January and February here, um... I'm in East Tennessee, and in January, February, it's kind of a wasteland outside, but there typically are still, like, birds every now and then, but there's not really the bees and the butterflies and all the other wildlife going on, so, you know, but sometimes you can watch the squirrels and the birds, and you still get a little bit of that, that nature fix that you need, you know? So, you kind of also have to go off the seasons with this kind of thing. Maybe your break has nothing to do with nature if it's too cold. Maybe instead your break just has to do with sitting watching a video or something like just taking your mind out of that um workaholic mindset and that productivity mindset for a minute and putting it in a different spot putting it in a different environment for a little bit um I think that helps a lot so I basically just worked more breaks into my schedule and that's how it started and it kept evolving from there I kept adapting and adding more things I would add more breaks I would um stop forcing myself to paint a certain amount of hours every single day. I would stop um, just making myself make a certain amount of pieces in a certain amount of time frame and things like that. And what was really interesting about this is I wasn't just stopping altogether. I was still making stuff. And I noticed I was getting faster, which is kind of strange, not what I expected to happen, but over the past two years, I've gotten faster at my uh, skills, I've gotten more efficient, I have needed less work hours in my day just because I am just more efficient and able to get things done faster. So I don't need as much time at the easel or as much time you know, working to the bone as I used to need to do. So it's, it's strange. I can't necessarily tell you that that's why. I can't necessarily say and give credit to the breaks for that. Um, so instead, I'll just say that um, I think what the breaks for sure did is helped me avoid burnout. And burnout can cause you to take a huge break that you wouldn't otherwise take. So, for example, I'm pretty sure I went, like, a month without really making anything in, like, 2017, 2018 after Christmas. I just, like, went, like, a whole month of January or something and just, like, didn't even paint or something crazy like that. And to me, where I'm at now, 
that kind of blows my mind to think about. I'm just like, wait, what? I don't ever go, like, a whole month without making any art at all. Like, you know what I mean? Um, now, except with the beginning of COVID and everything, but we'll actually talk about COVID in a different video, because I think it needs its own video. Um, but anyway, other than that, though, I can't really imagine just going so long without painting or sketching or doing something creative for that long. But hey, burnout, burnout can cause so many things. And uh, it can also cause some mental, like, um, mental health problems too. Like you don't want to give yourself more issues in life, you know? <laughs> you, you really, you really want to try to take care of yourself. Um, Self-care is not a joke. Like it's a real thing we all need. So I had to reevaluate what my limit was, and again, this was something I kind of had to play by ear and I kind of had to adapt to. So, step three, I decided to work less and take more breaks. Um, that's kind of, the, I mean, I kind of touched on that in step two, but basically, I started weaving more breaks into my day, and I started forcing myself to look out the window a lot, because I feel like... For me personally, I love nature, so I really like to look out the window, maybe even step out on the patio or step back on my back deck and just hear the birds chirp, for goodness sake. Like, it doesn't take a lot. Like, just a, just a quick break here and there um, on top of the normal bathroom breaks, food breaks, and all of that. But not only that, but step three <clears throat> also encompassed my morning routine. My morning routine used to be very strict. I used to be so particular about my morning routine. But ever since COVID <clears throat> and ever since struggling with burnout before even COVID even came here and we even were really talking about it that much, um, having that experience with all the burnout and then COVID hitting, all of this made me really reevaluate my morning routine. And my morning routine, since I'm a night owl, is no longer strict and just really intense and just like, I don't know, it used to be I'd have to get up at whatever time, like early in the morning, like not early, like at seven. I mean, I am, I am a night owl. I am not a morning person. So for me, early is eight. <laughs> so like, let's get that straight. So I used to basically force myself to get up at like eight, eight thirty, have my coffee, try to hurry and have my coffee and eat my breakfast and then just quickly like get to work right after that. But I stopped doing that I guess over the past few months, uh, ever I don't know about ever since COVID hit, but like somewhere in the COVID universe of 2020, I started to really drag out my morning because I know that I'm not a morning person and I know I need the morning to be super chill so that I can have a really nice day and basically if my morning is very, very chill, it motivates me in the middle of the day to get more shit done because... I don't know how else to explain it other than, oh man, I started my morning so late. Now I need to bust my butt to get my stuff done. Plus, my streams, currently anyway, I may change this, but currently my streams for the past, like, however long I've been streaming, like two, two and a half years, however long it's been, three years. I don't think it's been, no, it's not been three years yet, but like two and a half years or whatever. My streams have always been at night. I've only had like a couple daytime streams, and which I might change. But for the time being, my streams are at night, and so I also kind of think to myself, well, why was I so strict about my mornings when I work, like, three days a week at night? That's kind of weird. Like, that that's kind of strange. Like, most people who, you know, their schedule, like, my work schedule is kind of all over the place anyway, but, like, most people who work at night, they're not like, well, I better get up, like, at the crack of dawn to, like, start, you know, start my day. No, that's not really normally how that goes. So I was like, well, it doesn't really make sense for me to be so strict on myself in the morning if I do a lot of stuff at night. So to be fair, my schedule is just kind of wackadoo anyway. So it's kind of hard to pin down when I should be getting up and when I should be starting my day. But that aside, I started just making my morning really slow. I would drink my coffee slow. I would eat my breakfast slow. I would enjoy my morning. I would let my morning go until like 10.30 a.m. And I'm not even joking. I'd still do that right now. I let my morning continue until like 10.30. And then once like 10.30 hits is usually when I go, you know, I really need to get off the couch and I really need to get to work. And so then I'll work until like somewhere between 12 and 2. And then somewhere between 12 and 2, I take lunch. 
And then after that lunch break, I'm either going to do a chore or I'm going to get back to work. And if I'm having a day where I'm just like in the thick of it, maybe I'll actually take a nap after lunch. Yeah, yeah. Now, this doesn't happen that often, but in the throes of COVID and like everything going on, I would say somewhere maybe between May and July, sometimes I would take a break after or take a nap after lunch, you know, if I was really just like, uh, because, you know, a lot of us have not been in the best headspace during the pandemic. I think that goes without saying. So I gave myself a little bit of a leeway with that. Um, But I haven't had to do that in a while. But anyway, so that's kind of how I avoid burnout. And I don't really burn out now. Um, Now, I can still burn out with anything else that I have a schedule for. Like, I have a schedule for my streams. Um, I stream, at least right now, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. um, So, at night. So, I could potentially burn out on that just because I have a schedule for it. I find that anything that I, like, block out in an exact schedule at an exact times every day or every other day or whatever the case may be, I'm more likely to burn out on it because I'm, like, forcing myself to do it at this exact time every time. Whereas when I kind of just am chill and I'm laid aback and I kind of play it more by ear and more by, like, (laughs) um intuition, I guess. I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, When I go off of that instead, I notice that I am so much less likely to burn out. But you, you do want to still have that voice in you that tells you to get to work because you don't want to, you don't really want to take this too far to where you're not really getting anything done because then your paintings are just going to sit there half finished, right? So I think there's a balance that needs to be made And I think that any time you're overworking yourself or underworking yourself, you could get, you could take it too far. Um, This way, the current way that I have it going for me, I am avoiding burnout pretty much completely. Are there some days that I just like have to take a break still? Yeah, but at least I'm taking like a day off instead of like a month off, which I think helps me overall on the larger scale because you kind of have to zoom out. (laughs) You kind of have to like look at the big picture um, because I think a lot of times we just get stuck on like, well, how did my week go? How did my month go? Instead of looking at like, how did the year go? You know what I mean? So anyway, those are just some of my uh, tips on what I did. Um, And it's really, really nice and helpful and you, you've got to do what you got to do. Some of you are probably morning people, and some of you are probably night owls, and I think that that is very important to know. Like, you need to find out, and maybe you're somewhere in between, maybe you're neither, maybe you can just kind of do whatever you're, you're needed to do, and that's even better. If you're flexible like that, that's even better. Um, I am the kind of person that tends to stay up really late and get up late, so I consider myself a night owl for that reason. Um, so this works for me. Uh, you just gotta find what works for you. Maybe you're the opposite. Maybe you need to get up at like 7 a.m. or earlier and quickly have your breakfast. Um, and then you have to like jump into your day right after that. And then you have to have like a lot of a break in the evening and at night. And I totally understand that. My schedule is more like slow morning and then my like Late morning through evening is, like, pound the pavement, working hard, and then um, taking, of course, in between there, I take a break for lunch. But then when it's dinner time, take a break for dinner. And then a lot of times after dinner, I take a, a nap. That's when I take a nap now. And then I stream after my nap. So that's typically my day. And then after stream, I, I go to bed. Not long after that. I stay up a little bit, and then I go to bed. Um, so... Yeah, that's kind of my typical day. At least that's a typical stream day. When I'm not streaming and it's a weekday, like a Tuesday or a Thursday, I have more of a break because I don't stream. So I just kind of let my evening be just like a whole break the whole evening. And then Saturday and Sunday, sometimes I work on the weekends and sometimes I take the whole weekend off. It just depends on what is going on and how much energy I have to spend on work. So anyway, that is what I do. 
that is how I approach things, and I hope this helps you guys, but I gotta go. Um, I, I've got other video ideas that I'm gonna do, and I just wanted to go over those really quick. So I'm also gonna do a video on how I avoid art block. Um, I'm gonna do a video on that really soon, so keep an eye out on that. I'm gonna do a video about you know, being an artist during COVID and just dealing with COVID and all the feelings that come along with that because that's its own thing. I'm going to be doing a video on just like general updates, um, which I don't know if I can tie that into the COVID video or not. We'll see. I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do a garden tour video, but we'll see how that goes. And eventually down the road, this might be a while, <laughs> But eventually I want to do another studio tour, but that might be a while because the studio is kind of a mess right now. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great, great day, and I will see you guys next time. And I hope you enjoyed this speed paint of this digital art I did on my iPad. And please let me know down below what you do to avoid burnout. Are there any things you do to avoid burnout, or do you just have, like, remedies for how to deal with current burnout? Like, if you are in the middle of a burnout situation, the thick of it... What are some things you do to pull yourself out of it? I would love to know. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.